Good morning. It's Sunday, July 5th. It is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, and it is, of course, also the weekend of the 4th of July Independence Day celebrations. Today we consider the mystery of God, whose ways are sometimes hidden from the wise and the intelligent. Jesus associates with those who are often excluded from the religious community. Like St. Paul, we too struggle with our own selfish desires and seek God's mercy and forgiveness. We gather to be refreshed by Christ's invitation. Come to me, all you that are weary. Gathered around word, water, and meal, we find rest for our souls. I invite you to prepare yourselves for worship as together we share the right for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our opening hymn for this day, America the Beautiful.
move in liberating strife. Who more than self their country loved and mercy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading for this week is a reading from the book of Romans in the seventh chapter. St. Paul writes, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel for this day is the Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he was has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son 
except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, as I said before, it's 4th of July weekend. Independence Day celebrations took place yesterday all across the country and are still many places going on today. It is a, a day for families to gather together typically, although this is not a typical year. Many fireworks displays have been postponed or canceled because of the uh, coronavirus that's still very active around and among us. There's a lot of things that are not typical this year in the celebration of the 4th of July and in, in Independence Day. There's not a lot because people are weary and tired both of the the pandemic that we've been dealing with and weary and tired of the of the, the injustices and the violence that continue to take place in our country no lee greenwood wrote the song and and it's really a, a, a fun song to listen to in which he celebrates the freedom of being an american i'm proud to be an american where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today because there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA it's a wonderful song and, and I know a lot of people enjoy hearing it being sung and enjoy singing along with the song in a spirit of patriotism but these days it's harder and harder to do that because because even though we talk about the freedom that we have in this country we need to to recognize that just because we say that we are free doesn't mean that 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 we really are or that the freedom that we celebrate is really equal for everyone we're becoming more and more aware that that's not true, that not everyone in this country is as free as everyone else. Or is able to celebrate their freedoms in the same way as everyone else. I thought about St. Paul in the second lesson today, who Paul grew up uh, proud to be a Roman, celebrating the, the freedom that Roman citizens had. Paul was a, a free Roman citizen but after his encounter with Jesus Christ, St. Paul recognized that, that there was something missing, something that wasn't quite right with the freedom of, of this, this country, Rome, that he loved so much, that there were problems and issues that needed to be addressed, not only in his country, but in his own self, in his own being, he realized a lot of his freedoms were based upon selfish and self-serving sinful inclinations that that dwell in all of us and finally saint paul says i know what i should do but i have a hard time doing it how many times have we thought that i know what i should do but i have a hard time doing it wretched people that we are we could all say this with saint paul wretched people that we are who can save us from this body of death? Who can set us free from sin? We may claim that we are free in this country, but that freedom is really, really limited for many people, and it's, it's, it's not really the kind of freedom that God is offering to us and wants us to celebrate. We are enslaved to sin. And Paul finally recognizes the only person that can set us free from sin is Jesus Christ. 
So God sent his son, Jesus, to be born into this world that's captive, captive to sin, enslaved by sin, a world in which there are injustices and, and uh, terrible things happening all the time. It's really not new, sadly. <laughs> Jesus says, to, to what can I compare this generation? He might as well be talking about our generation. It's like children yelling at each other. You're not doing what I want you to do. Well, you're not doing what I want you to do. People are divided and can't agree on what's right or what's American or what isn't American, what's proper or improper. It's weary. And it becomes even more wearisome when it affects our lives. We wish it would just all go away, but it doesn't go away because the world that we live in, our very bodies that we live in, are captive to sin. We need Jesus Christ to set us free, which is why Jesus in our gospel lesson says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. In the Gospel of John, Jesus tells his disciples, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. But there's an irony in this freedom that Jesus offers. We are free from sin. We, we are uh, promise the gift of God's unconditional love, his grace and mercy and his forgiveness. There's nothing we can do that will separate us from God's love. We are set free from sin. But we are set free from sin so that we might instead be enslaved as servants of Jesus Christ. We might live our lives as servants, serving the one who has set us free, Jesus Christ, by loving other people. This is my commandment, that Jesus said, that you love, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you love even your enemies, those who persecute you, those who are different than you, those who act in ways that you don't agree with, that you love them all in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not easy. It's hard. We know it's what we're supposed to do, but we have a hard time doing it. When I entered into the ministry uh, before, just as I was uh, graduating from seminary, before I had been actually ordained, my wife gave me this ring that I wear. I've been wearing it all these years. I can put it up here. It's a cross ring. There it is. Cross ring. And on the inside of the ring, what you can't see, you see the cross. But on the inside of the ring, my wife had an, something engraved, a, a phrase engraved, and she had it engraved in Greek because it's a, it's uh, words from Scripture. The words are, "Dulos to Jesu Christu," servant, servant of Jesus Christ. When I was ordained into the ministry, and I wear this ring now for all these years that I've been ordained, 40 years now, um, it is serving as a reminder to me that that's what it means to be a pastor, to be, to be a child of God, is to be a servant. I look at the cross, and I, I see that cross to remember that this is how Jesus fulfilled his mission and his ministry by being a servant, emptying himself, humbling himself by dying on a cross, becoming obedient even unto death. So we are called, all of us, to be servants, to be enslaved not by the world in which we live, to be enslaved not by, by the, the, the sin, the selfishness, the greed, the fear, the anger that dwells inside of us, but to be set free from all of that by the love of God and Jesus Christ so that we might be enslaved enslaved to Jesus Christ, to his love, be servants of God by, by finding ways to love one another, to proclaim that all people are equal, 
And until that happens, until we see that happening more and more in our world and in our country in particular, it is difficult to celebrate with pride and, and, and joy the, 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 the freedom that we have as American citizens. When we know that that freedom is, is temporary, that it is inadequate. If only we could become more and more people who gather together to celebrate, not just on Independence Day, but on every day of the week, to, to celebrate the freedom that is ours in Jesus Christ, to be servants of God, reach out and care for and love one another. Wretched people that we are, St. Paul says, who can set us free? Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ has done exactly that. He has set us free so that we might serve. During this holiday weekend, when so many are celebrating the freedom of this country, I think it, it would be helpful for us as we, as we remember who we are as children of God, servants of Jesus Christ, to, to, to look for ways in which, in which we might reach out to others who don't experience the same kinds of freedoms in this country that we do. Uh, find people who are burdened by injustice and by a disadvantage in their lives and proclaim to them the good news that, that they are set free from their burdens. Come to me, Jesus says. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. In the midst of a crazy world that, that has people yelling at each other because they can't get everyone to agree and try to get people to do what you think they should be doing, in the midst of this crazy world, Jesus Christ is still proclaiming to us, come to me. As children, I thank you, Father, that you have kept these things from the wise and the intelligent. In other words, you know, this knowledge of knowing who we are as children of God is not something that really makes sense. It's not something we can figure out and, 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 and you know, beat it into someone else as something they need to do or need to know. It is something that just comes by faith, the faith of children, little ones who simply believe that they are loved. So we are children of God, loved, forgiven, and called to serve in his name. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the hymn of the day for today, O Day of Peace. O oh, day of peace that dimly shines Through all our hopes and praise and dreams Guide us to justice, truth and love Delivered from selfish schemes May swords of hate fall from our hands Our hearts from envy find release Till by God's grace our war Shall see Christ's promised reign of peace. Then shall the Shall the fears divide us more 
There's beasts and cat who calmly graze A little child shall lead them all Then enemies shall learn to love All creatures find their true We join together now confessing our faith as we share the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders and powerful prophets. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us toward sustainable living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations, especially the United States and Canada, who celebrate their nationhood. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed, especially those whom we hold in our hearts. Take their yoke upon you, ease their burdens, give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for our congregation. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our buildings. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways of your love transform our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our closing hymn for this day, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.